I've been saying some things about tithes and law transgression that I believe is quite alarming to some people. This is a paper that I've been distributing in Marion, Illinois. It has a picture of Christ when he turned the tables on the money changers. And it's headed, the Lamb of God turned the tables on money changers and old covenant tithes are not new covenant money. And I'll go ahead and read that. It is written in the Old Testament, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. And that's in Jeremiah 31, verses 31 and 32. And in the New Testament is written, But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. That's in Hebrews 8, verses 6 and 7. Yes, indeed, the mediator of the new covenant has now obtained a more excellent ministry, in that he saith a new covenant he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Hebrews 8.13 So, if a covenant blending money changer tells you that you are cursed with a curse if you don't pay tithes according to the Old Testament, book of Malachi, just tell them that it's written in the New Testament that Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. I care to mention that I'm a priest of God, but I'm not of the old covenant priesthood, who Moses wrote a law witness against. He told them to take this book of the law and put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. In Deuteronomy 31.26. And so when Christ says upon two commandments and all the law, he's not contradicting himself by also saying, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all is fulfilled. So if you want to reprove a covenant blender type who adds law to law, just ask them to explain how Matthew 5.18's jots and tittles not passing from the law lines up with the following law change in Hebrews. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. Hebrews 7.12 they don't tend to talk about why the law changed or Moses' law witness against the priesthood of the Old Covenant. No. And they not only want that unjustified money they call tithes, but they also want sinners to pay those guilt offerings on Sunday. So let's consider what sin really is according to what's written. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. 1 John 3, verse 4. All right, now that we know that sin is the transgression of the law, let's consider what the law really is, as we read the following conversation between a lawyer and the master. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered, he answering, saying, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, 
and who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that shewed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. That's in Luke 10, verses 25 to 37. This is the law according to the mediator of the new covenant. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Matthew twenty-two forty. 40. And who transgresses the law? He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. 1 John 3, 8 and 9. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. And that's in John 3, 7. The world says that no one is perfect, but Moses says, Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God, in Deuteronomy 18.13. And the Lamb says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And that's in Matthew 5.48. So why should we not be perfect? If real law transgressors of the real law that's spelled out in Luke chapter 10 say they have no sin, they deceive themselves. But if they confess their law transgressions, he is faithful and just to forgive the law transgressors and cleanse them of all unrighteousness. Again, I say, he that committeth sin is of the devil. But whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, as it is written. And real priests of God do not agree with other people's money tithe collection. It's ill-gotten gain to our high priest. That new covenant, obviously, based on what's written, is now justified. The law that's written on our hearts When I talk to my Father in heaven, he lets me know this, that it's justified. And I do keep those commandments. I care about people. I know uh, there's been some concern with people about me uh, being angry at times. And uh, I do believe that uh, real uh, ministers of God... Uh, do execute wrath, those that understand Romans 13, and the fact that that's a one-house rule. There's not a, uh, there's no such thing uh, in the real body of Christ as a, as a separation of church and law, because the real powers that be are the real ministers of God, according to Paul. That's a one-house rule. So uh, this is huge, because... Um, there's a lot of people transgressing the law when they're not collecting, uh, when they collect tithes. And I've heard this from so many people that uh, they've gone to one of these so-called churches that do business on Sunday and uh, they don't have a place to stay. 
You know, I've talked to a lot of homeless people and uh, these places just tend to, maybe some of them have let them sleep there for the night, maybe, but for the most part, they just don't, they don't allow that. So, so they're, you know, they're collecting this money based on the claim that they're a charitable organization. Uh, they want to make themselves look like they're helping, uh, you know, the poor and the homeless, but yet they're actually uh, selling their customers under a false government when they suggest that the powers that be are the elected officials of voters. So this is the other paper. I did a video, another video today that I uploaded where I was talking about the seed of the beast. This is another paper that I've been passing out with that one in Marion. And I was led to talk about that and do a video on this today. Thank you.